We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Tequila Johnson. She's with the Equity Alliance. Equity Alliance. And uh, we're talking uh, basically about voter turnout in terms of not just low voter turnout, but also barriers to certain segments of the population where mm -hmm. if they were removed, she would argue, would increase voter turnout, mm -hmm. would it not? And mm -hmm. I think, I don't know. The I, Here's the thing that's interesting. Uh, from where I sit, the idea of having as many people who can legally vote as possible, I want it. I want everyone mm -hmm. to vote. I want everyone to have a say. You're saying that there is a certain degree of an establishment out there that wants to maintain its hold on power and is determined to keep those who could maybe change that and a segment of the population from voting out. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward, huh? It's That's pretty. It's pretty straightforward. I know sometimes it seems a little more nuanced, but it's not. It's it's that simple. That, it's okay. That simple. If they can control who votes and make it just a certain segment of the population, mm -hmm. then they can maintain their hold on power. Whereas if everyone else, or as I said, my if I had my brothers, I just want everyone to vote. Yeah. And we just see where the dice fail. But everyone doesn't. Everyone vote. does not vote. Everyone does not want to vote. Okay. Or well, I think people would like to vote if they felt mm -hmm. that their vote made a difference, or if they had the trust that's in place, right? Because yep. think about it: if everyone who didn't vote voted, and we know you talk about the the one percent, and there's there's wealth, and there's older groups that, that do vote that are established, but the ones who don't, they voted, they'd control everything. Yep. And that scares people. That scares a lot of people, <laughs> including probably some of the people who don't vote. Yeah. Oh, maybe so. Maybe so. Let's go to uh, Linda. Linda, good morning. Hi, Linda. Good morning, Nick. Hey. Uh, just to bring up uh, the same topic that you uh, had a visitor recently about, I have my parents are both about 92 and 93 year old, years old. They have their mind. They read and listen to the news, read and all. And they have their own thoughts about who needs to be voted for, et cetera. <clears throat> I have in the past taken my parents to the voting polls, and they have allowed me to d walk with my parents and help them vote. Mm -hmm. So the, the previous caller, that, that it is possible for somebody that's blind to vote. <clears throat> uh, and But now... It is, it, their mobility is such that they don't like to get out and <clears throat> get in those long lines. Mm -hmm. And so now I looked up about them voting, um, <clears throat> uh, not absentee, but uh, uh, just, I can't remember the, the term. But it, it's going to be such a hassle for them every time they have to vote or won't want to vote, they've got to get a piece of paper signed by their doctor saying that they their mobility is such that they cannot go in and vote so they send in their votes mm -hmm. uh that 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 just does not just doesn't seem right now people can do absentee so yeah. if they do absentee voting mm -hmm. is that the same thing as the, the situation with my parents yeah, you know, it seems to me like we should be making it easier for people to vote instead of more difficult. Now, her situation is a, a perfect example. She's got two parents that are older now, mm -hmm. right? And it's difficult for them to get out as they once did, and they probably wish they could. It should be easier for them to vote from home. You always hear about that. Now, at some point, will people be able to vote by mail? Yeah, they have. Certain states have yeah, that's right. vote by mail, automatic voter registration. I mean... And they haven't had problems with fraud. They haven't had problems with fraud. So you think that would help with the turnout in general? She's talking about senior citizens there. Uh, my big focus would be, you know, how do you get the young people to vote and some of the more ethnic groups to vote? Um, I think when you think about the younger people and some of the more ethnic groups, it's going to take a ton of voter education and it's going to take a ton of transparency, which is something that we don't have right now in government. And one of the things that we're pushing as the Equity Alliance is that voter transparency, that voter education, those types of things that get young people excited. We like to consider ourselves unconventional organizers because we go to the nightclubs, we go places where people are and we get them engaged in the process. <laughs> That's smart. Wait, you'll do voter drives at nightclubs? Oh, yeah. Love it. We've had like a party bus where we've gone from <laughs> nightclub to nightclub registering voters. <laughs> That's awesome. And people yeah. like are so excited about it because it takes away that perception that voting is this boring mm -hmm. <laughs> thing that only a certain group of people does and it brings it back to voting is 
probably one of the most American things that you can do. It's probably one, it is one of the sure. most powerful things you can do, and as it relates to community and government, um, you know, I try to get people to see that voting isn't about a politician. Voting isn't about who's running for office. Voting is about self determination. It's about self agency. It's about freedom. That voting is what America was founded on, which is democracy. This the whole idea of a democratic republic, where we are able to choose who governs us, where we're able to choose how we're governed. If you're not voting, then you are not making a choice mm -hmm. on who governs you. Whether you like that person or not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're not making a choice. And if you're not registered to vote, you can't even put yourself in position to be one of those people. You can't sit on boards. You can't sit on commissions. You can't run for office unless you're registered to vote. So it's all about this access to freedom and decision making and the self power that you get from utilizing your vote even though you're just one vote. Yep. But one vote, man, it all adds up. Let's go to Charles. Charles, good morning. Hi Charles. Yeah, I think we would have higher voter turnout if we got the word out that voting does not get you drafted for jury duty. That's his name is on the electric <laughs> bill, not because he registered to vote. If more people were not afraid of being drafted for jury duty, they would vote. And this early voting is a great idea when it takes place on Saturday. A lot of people can't get away from work on that second Tuesday of November on weekdays to vote because your employers won't let them. But when you can only vote in any place you want, that will really get the vote out. Yeah, I don't know if there's people out there that don't vote because they fear maybe they're somehow going to be in the, the roles where they could be called, called for jury duty. I'd love to be on jury duty myself. And so I, I think that, that <laughs> especially when you think about criminal justice reform, we yeah. definitely need a diverse <clears throat> pool of people right. to pull from for jury duty. Um, but you can always decline jury duty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's ways. And the other thing he mentioned was um, people... Um, he mentioned jury duty, and he mentioned one more thing. Well, Slip my mind. We just, yeah, uh, what was the other part of it he just said? Uh, it'll hit me in a second, but let's take yeah. David, and then we'll get back to that. Let's go to it. David, are you there? Good morning, David. Howdy. Hey, what's on your mind? Uh, anytime you're asking descendants of poor people who were born in America over the last, let's say, 60 years, you've got to remember what happened in the 90s. If you remember right, Clinton went along with the government of privilege and signed into power NAFTA. And then he went along with the government of privilege and did the same thing Reagan did, he gave amnesty. And now the Democrats can't survive without uncontrolled immigration and uncontrolled job exportation. And the ones you hurt the worst with this are the poor. So the Democrats asking poor people to vote for them is like going back in time and having the Nazis ask Jews to support them. Well, all right. Now, you know, he's saying necessarily that the poor are only going to vote Democrat. And if they're targeting, I'm not sure where he was going on the, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with the Nazi aspect of that. But, um, I, okay, I think if, if you go along his line of thinking, he's thinking that, most of the poor are going to vote Democrat? Yeah, and that's one of the things that that I struggle with as an African American woman is like I told you before we went off camera, I am not I don't consider myself neither a Democrat or Republican. Right. See, I don't think I mean there's plenty of And there are plenty of people who think just like me. Socioeconomically, you know? I mean it can run the gamut whether you wrote Republican or Democrat. It may be true that you see perhaps more money in the Republican mm -hmm. Party. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I mean the primary reason why you see a lot of people of color voting <clears throat> Democrat is because of a lot of the narratives that are put out by mm -hmm. the conservative Conservative Party. Mm -hmm. You have Trump right now who's in office that spews a lot of divisive racist rhetoric. So as a person of color, why would you want to be connected to something that, you know, essentially is saying, I want to oppress you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it only makes sense. Um, so in terms of what he's saying, I think that the narrative has to shift away from being about partisan voting, especially in a race like the mayor's race, where this is a nonpartisan election. And it has to shift to voting for people who reflect the values that you have or you want to see reflected within your community. And that's one of the things that we try to preach as the Equity Alliance. We don't push people to go out and vote for a particular candidate based off party affiliation. 
we push people to go out and vote based off of what they see as a need for their community. Not all we're not a monolithic society. Mm -hmm. Not all low income people think the same. Not all African American mm -hmm. people think the same. Not all immigrant people think the same. But one of the things that we do believe is that we should all have the freedom and self determination to think or decide however we want to decide as an individual and not be grouped into this 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 status of being black or low income or this or that and because that we're gonna, so much more. Yeah, and that you're gonna vote one way. And that you're gonna vote as, one way. That's not true. Across the board. Okay, let's take a break on that. When we come back, more calls, our final segment, and uh, we'll talk more about exactly what people can do if they really do want to make a difference. We'll be back right after this. Mm -hmm.